so I get excited for pretty much any product that I review, but this is one of the few that I'm super excited about because it's like a new permanent component for my computer. I'm talking about the Deepcool Castle 360 EX all-in-one liquid cooler. Now you may not be able to see it in this shot, but this is the cooler that's in my computer right now. First of all, let's get on with the price. It's about $140 on Amazon. There's another $150 model. It may be a little bit different depending on the color. This is the black model or gray. I'm actually not sure what it's called, but they do have a white model as well in case you're interested in that. I'd say that's a very reasonable price considering how it performs. We're going to get into that a little later. But first of all, what's this cooler for? So for those of you who are new to the computer space and aren't really sure what coolers cool, well, this one's made for the processor. It's made to cool the processor. Processors generate a lot of heat, especially when they're under load. So you need a cooler to cool them. And in case you're wondering what type of processor is compatible with this cooler, any of them. You could use this cooler on any processor. However, it's made mainly for processors like the Core i7, or the Ryzen 7 processors, just because they're higher end and this is a pretty high end cooler. Now, of course, you could use it on an i3, on a Ryzen 3, a Ryzen 5 processor, but it's really not necessary. You could cool those processors with something a little less expensive. If you wanted to use this cooler on those, sure, feel free. It works perfectly fine with them too. It's compatible. As long as it fits in your case, you're good to go. So in the box, you get the pump, the tubes, and the radiator. That's all assembled. You don't have to mess with any of that. You also get three 120 millimeter fans. Those don't light up, unfortunately. They're just plain black. Now, depending on how you mount them, you probably won't even see them. The pump, however, does light up. The pump, on the other hand, has some super good lighting. I'm sure you guys have seen that already in the video. You also get all the screws necessary, an excellent manual. The only tool you really need that doesn't come included is a Phillips screwdriver. That's all you need. Now I want to note that because this is the 360 model, it has a 360 millimeter radiator, it may not fit in all of your guys' cases. I'm using the Gamdia's Apollo M2 case and in the front panel, it's pretty much open from top to bottom so it fits in a 360 millimeter radiator. Most cases, if not all of them, should have space for a 240, so you might want to get the 240 millimeter model. Some cases also have support for 280 millimeter radiators, so just keep that in mind. I'll, I'll have them all linked below and you guys can check them out. And before we get into the whole performance part, I just want to say that the installation could not be easier. The manual that comes included in this package made it super easy and clear to follow. Now for sure I'm not the best at assembling stuff, but this was pretty easy. The only thing I would recommend is towards the end when you're attaching the pump to the processor, you may want to get a third hand to just hold the bracket on the back so it won't move while you attach the pump. It's just something I struggled with. The other person just has to hold the bracket in the back while you attach the pump. It's really easy. So I have this castle cooling an i7 7700K processor. Now keep in mind that my processor for some reason just runs a little bit hotter than other ones. It's been like that since day one four years ago. It's always been like that. So I use this PC to browse the web, just watch YouTube videos, Google stuff, and perform easy tasks, Word documents, Excel, you know, stuff like that. I also use it to game, play GTA, Far Cry 5, Cold War here and there, and other games in general. So we'll take a look at that. And I also use it to edit videos using Adobe Premiere. Elements 15. Now keep in mind that Adobe Premiere Elements 15 does not use the GPU in any way to accelerate performance. So it leaves everything up to the processor. That generates a lot of heat. That's actually the, the single program that I've used that heats up the processor the most and by a lot too. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this cooler performs with that software. So let's check that out real quick. All right, so just to show you guys my game settings here on GTA 5 on PC, uh, 1440p, two times MSAA, all that good stuff, and then very high on everything. I try to keep it as high as I can while keeping it at a solid FPS most of the time. There are a few occasions where it goes below 60, but oh well. But you guys can see my settings, very high on most of them, if not all of them. And then playing as my boy Trevsky. Driving with one hand over here. And then you see the temperature on this screen right here. It's 58 degrees, 54. Kind of goes up and down between 53 and 58, but it almost never goes above 60 actually. This little, I've been playing it for like 10 minutes just to see before I start recording and it hasn't gone above 60. 58 has been the peak right there as you can see. And one thing to note is that my processor, it's a 4.2 gigahertz, but when it's under load, when, you know, when I'm gaming, doing other heavy tasks, it goes up to 4.6 gigahertz. So that does heat up the processor. But as you can see, it's not that much. And normal GTA 5 temperatures, normal gaming temperatures in general are 10 degrees hotter. They're in the mid 60s. 
maybe even in the low 70s depending on the game and what other processes you're running but yeah I mean 54 degrees 53 as I fly out of the vehicle actually it went up to 60 something right now when I flew out a lot of stuff happened in that little moment but I mean 48 right now pretty good all right now we're running Far Cry 5 here once again with the settings really quickly 2540 by 1440 actually 2560 by 1440 custom ultra and high on almost everything it's basically how it goes with this computer so it is nighttime over here I'm just gonna be playing with one hand and holding the camera with the other but let's look at the temperatures real quick so it's at 61 degrees 58 actually it's a little bit higher than GTA 62 right there maybe because it's a newer game it's a little bit more difficult to run than GTA settings are also a little bit higher with ultra and there's also a lot of stuff to load over here the world is a little bit bigger I think I'm not completely sure about that but yeah the temperatures are still good 54 to 64 Actually, 64 is the highest, and it's maintained it around the high 50s, which is still great. Games like these tend to stick in the mid-60s, so that's a definite improvement there. So, once again, Far Cry 5. Okay, and now Cold War finally actually had to run an update, so it took forever. We're also running at 2560 by 1440 over here. I'm playing with one hand once again, as always. 63 degrees Celsius. We're playing against bots because um, one hand, I don't want to get destroyed in multiplayer. But yeah, 62 degrees. So it's, it's staying in the low 60s here, which is not too bad. It's actually pretty good. And once again, this is probably the latest game. It is the latest game I've tested. So it's it's gonna be the more demanding one, especially at high settings. We are playing against other players over here. Even though it's bots, you know, it still has a lot of stuff to process and all that stuff, all that good stuff. So 58 degrees. All right. Okay, so this is one of the main tests, one of my main concerns whenever I buy a new cooler, because this program, Adobe Premiere Elements 15, I already spoke on it. It's, it runs very hot, my processor. So let's just check out a little bit. Let's rewind the video. This is this video that I'm editing. So you guys are getting a little behind the scenes look over here. And as you can see, it's already like really slow, even an i7 7700K processor. So, okay, it's running, and it's 4K video, you know, and sometimes it's just, yeah, yeah, whatever. But the temperature is at 75 degrees Celsius, which is actually not that bad, 75. I've seen other coolers, more expensive ones, go up to like the, the 80s easily. So, so far, so good. I mean, it's already running at like 5 degrees cooler than the, the most expensive cooler I've used before. Thumbs up on that as well. So after looking at all those temperatures, I'd say this cooler is a huge win. I definitely recommend it for somebody who has an i7 processor or a Ryzen 7. Now, like I said, the fans don't light up, but the pump does. It comes with a lighting controller, which you connect to the power supply. It has a few buttons on it to change the color mode and increase or decrease the speed of the mode. You can also turn it off completely. Now this makes it my favorite looking AIO pump out there by far. It's just great, as simple as that. After the outro, I'll have a little montage of the cooler, the lights, and the computer, just appreciating how it looks. With that said, the link will be down in the description for the cooler. It'll cool your processor, for sure. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to like, comment down below, and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.